As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in the wonderful city of Jerusalem, standing on a very ancient road that runs parallel to the western wall of the Temple Mount. This road is so old that it's for sure Jesus and his disciples walked on this road. In fact, everyone seemed to walk on this road. They took this road on the way to do business in the city. They used this road to go into the temple, out of the temple. This was a road that was regularly used by everybody in Jesus' time. But the reason I'm standing here today is because of the big hole in the road behind me. Why in the world does this ancient road have this massive hole? And the answer is very simple. In the year 70, the Emperor Titus came from Rome to the city of Jerusalem and he attacked the city of Jerusalem. And as part of the attack, they pushed all the stones from the Temple Mount. The stones literally fell and toppled down onto the road and broke the pavement. Well, if you can see the side of these stones, you'll know why they broke the pavement. They're simply enormous. They weigh tons, every one of them. Who would have ever thought that those stones could have been pried loose? If we had seen this Temple Mount when it was first built by Herod, it was one of the most colossal structures ever constructed. No one would have ever thought that it could have been destroyed. But in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus prophesied that that would happen. He said a day was coming when these stones would fall. That was a prophetic text. And then he began to describe all kinds of events that would take place in the world at the very, 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 very end of the age. But he began by describing these stones falling and they fell just like he said. And these serve as a guarantee, proof, that everything else he said in Matthew chapter 24 will also come to pass. First Timothy chapter three also tells us a lot. It is so full of vital information about what's going to happen in society at the very end of the age. We're living at the very end of the age and we're seeing some strange times in society. But the Holy Spirit prophesied this. You see, God didn't want to scare us. He wanted to prepare us so we could live victoriously in these times. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and today we're going to return to Matthew chapter 24 to see the signs Jesus said we would come at the end of the age just before he comes again. Don't miss today. This is going to be an amazing program. But first, I want to tell you that if you need prayer, please give us a ring or send us an email. The moment we hear from you, we're going to begin to pray with you for God to move in your life. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things. And in this ministry, we believe that when we cry out to God in faith, he hears us and he moves. And if you need God to move in your life, let us know how to pray because we'll put our faith together with you for God to do something amazing in your life and in any situation that you're facing right now. So please give us a call or send us an email. And remember that if you're not a partner, we're inviting you to become a partner with our ministry. You say, what's a partner? A partner is someone who financially gives to our ministry to help us take this teaching to people all over the world. I tell you very often that there are many places where people do not have access to teaching like you have and they're crying out for somebody to bring them the teaching of the Bible, and that's our job. God has called us, He has anointed us to teach the scripture, but we can only do it with the help of partners who financially put fuel in the tank so we can take this program to people all over the planet. And if you're already a partner, thank you so much for being a partner. We together are really affecting people's lives. And if you're not a partner, please join us as a partner. You can become a partner by going online or giving us a call. And the moment you become a partner, we'll send you a couple books as our way of saying, welcome to our partner family. We'll send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. And we'll send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone because 
it is dedicated to partners. I'm not prophesying a combat zone into your life. You're probably already in one, but this book will help you get through it. In fact, the subtitle says, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. And the moment you become a partner, we'll send these to you as our way of saying, welcome to the family. And I want to remind you that today we're offering you my brand new series called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. And the whole focus of this series is Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus gives us a list of signs that we will see to indicate we've come to the very end of the age. You need this because my friend, we're living in the end of the age and these signs are all around us. And this series comes with a marvelous study guide. The study guide is filled with the points, the principles, the Greek words, the history, everything in these programs is also in the study guide. And when you have the study guide, you can read it, you can see it, you can hear it and really get the teaching down deep inside you. And right now, we're also offering you my book by the same name, Signs you'll see just before Jesus comes. I believe every Christian needs this book and you need to read it. Don't just get it, read it. You need to understand precisely what Jesus said about the things we'll see and we'll experience at the very end of the age. That's us. God says, tag, you're it. He has chosen us to live at the end of the age. So we need to know what Jesus said about it. And we're also offering you right now my book called Last Day's Survival Guide, which is based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul tells us what's going to take place in society at the end of the age. Jesus gave us one list of signs. The Apostle Paul gave us another list of signs. So between both of these books, we're offering you all of it. But the Apostle Paul told us how to navigate this end time season. And that's why I call this Last Day's Survival Guide. The subtitle says, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. But reach for your Bible. And today we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 24. I have my Bible. I hope you have yours because in this program, we always use the Bible. Thank God for the Bible. And we're believing for a revival of the Bible in people's lives. But let's go to Matthew 24 and pick up in verse three, which is our anchor verse for this series. Jesus was talking to his disciples and the Bible tells us, and as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And there are five key words in this verse. The word when, what, sign, end, and world. You have to understand all five of these words. First of all, the disciples said, tell us when shall these things be? The word when in Greek is the word pote. It's very concrete. Lord, tell us specifically, give us concrete information exactly when will these things be and what? Even the word what is important. It is the little Greek word T, which describes the most minute, minuscule detail. They were asking Jesus for exact information. Lord, tell us down to the smallest detail, what shall be the sign of thy coming? And that word sign, the Greek word simeon, was the very word used to describe road signs along the road when you were traveling to a new destination. And of course, the road signs were designed to tell you where you were on the road and how much further you had to go. And the signs changed the closer and closer and closer you got to your destination. That's the word that is used here. So we know the disciples were asking, Lord, tell us what signs will we see on the prophetic road as we come to the end of the age? How will we be able to know where we are prophetically? How much time remains for the journey? Lord, what will be the signs on the prophetic road as we go to the end of the age? And then they continued to ask, and of the end of the world. Well, the word world is the Greek word ionos, the bad translation. It's really the word for the age. The world will never end, my friend. If anybody tells you the world is ending, just dismiss that because the world will never end. The world will be changed. But the disciples were asking about the end of the age. The word end is the Greek word suntaleas. The word suntaleas describes the closure the summation or the wrap up of something. They were literally saying, Lord, how will we know when everything's finally about to be wrapped up? And they understood prophetically that eventually this age would run its course, it would end, and then it would give birth to another age. 
So they were asking, Lord, how will we know exactly, precisely, what will be the signs and when will be the exact end of this current age that we're living in right now? And then Jesus begins to answer them in verse 4. They asked for one sign, but Jesus gave them many. And when you come to Luke 24, verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. We've already covered that. Then verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We've already covered that. Verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We've already covered that. Then verse 7, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. We've already covered that. And today we're going to move to the next part of verse 7, where Jesus says, There will be famines and pestilences. But notice Jesus says, There shall be famines. Somebody might say, well, there've always been famines and that's true. But in this verse, Jesus is speaking prophetically. He says, there shall be. He's pointing to the very end of the age and what's going to happen just before the age is wrapped up. And Jesus said, at that time, there shall be famines. Now you may think that you know what the word famines means, but hold on because today you're going to learn something brand new. This word famines, the Greek word limas is plural in the Greek text and it describes multiple famines, a scarcity of grain, deficits of all types, including financial deficits and financial shortfalls. Well, famines are not new. But in this verse, Jesus was prophesying there shall be. He was pointing to the very end of the age, describing a development that would occur at the very wrap up of the age that we're living in right now. Jesus said there shall be famines. And because the word used in this verse is plural, it depicts multiple famines and multiple scarcities that will occur in various parts of the earth at the very end of the age. And it is a fact that Jesus was prophesying massive world hunger across the globe at the very end of the age. So let's look at the facts right now about world hunger. Well, right now in the world, there are nearly 8 billion people. And if you can imagine it, one out of nine people in the world today are suffering from chronic undernourishment. Making matters worse is malnutrition that we're describing produces poor health. When you have poor health, you can't work. When you can't work, this leads to more poverty. Poverty leads to hunger. Hunger leads to more poverty. And here we see a vicious cycle designed by the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy poverty and hunger is a horrible thing, and it is clear why God hates poverty. God is against poverty, and Jesus came to break the spirit of poverty in people's lives. And if you add to this, the growing number of displaced people today because of wars and rumors of wars, which Jesus addressed in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7, people are being displaced and this adds to the problem of people not having food, people not having jobs. Wow, this problem just gets worse and worse and worse. And Jesus said this would be felt all over the planet and it would be a sign that we're coming to the very end of the age. So how should we as Christians respond to this problem all over the world today? I want to read to you two verses. Proverbs 19, 17 says, He that has pity upon the poor lendeth to the Lord, and that which he giveth, will he pay him again? Listen to Proverbs 21, 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but he shall not be heard. And in these verses, we find that we as believers have a responsibility to hear the cry of the poor, to hear the cry of those that are hungry and do what we can to help them. It is amazing that a hamburger, a side of fries, and a simple soft drink are the equivalent of what it would take to feed some people for a whole week in other parts of the world. And my friend, I want to tell you, it would not be a great sacrifice, but it would be a great thing to do if you would just deny yourself one meal a week and send the equivalent of that meal to a ministry to minister those whose lives are in jeopardy because of malnutrition. We can do something about this. And the Bible says when we give to the poor, we're lending to the Lord. God will get involved with us when we have a heart for those that are suffering. But living in the last days will provide us an opportunity to take action because there's going to be a lot of people that are suffering malnutrition 
at the end of the age. But wait, 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 there's something else. Because this word limas, translated famines, also describes an economic shaking. You say, Rick, how could it describe an economic shaking? Well, the word limas, translated famines, actually describes a scarcity of grain. In the first century, when Jesus was speaking, economies were largely based on grain. And if there was a famine of grain, it would lead to great financial chaos and instability. For example, Egypt. Egypt was rich because Egypt had a lot of grain. But if Egypt had a famine of grain, it would literally shake the economic world of the first century. You have to understand that when you look at this word famines. It really describes an end time economic shaking. Jesus was forecasting economic shortfalls and deficits that would affect the global economy at the very end of the age, or it was a prediction of financial instability at the end of the age, deficits, economic shortages, financial hardships that will affect various parts of the earth. But wait, that's not all. When you go to Luke 21, verse 11, Jesus adds, and there shall be pestilences. Again, he says, shall be. There were pestilences at that time, but Jesus was pointing prophetically to the end of the age. There shall be at the end of the age when everything is being wrapped up, there shall be the emergence of pestilences. The Greek word loimas, which is plural in Greek, it is plural pestilences. These are old diseases being reactivated or newly emerging diseases that have never been seen before. And in Greek, this word loimas is a medical term that describes disease. And Jesus here in the plural was prophesying Numerous diseases would emerge at the very end of the last days. And it is a fact, my friend, that today normal strains of disease are raging across the planet along with newly emerging infectious diseases that no one has ever seen before. These are old diseases that have had life breathed into them again and newly emerging diseases that have the potential to affect mass populations. Now, let me read to you from the website of the World Health Organization. Listen to this. In this stage of history, professionals predict that directly before us will be the emergence of new infectious diseases and the re-emergence of old diseases that will have a significant impact on health. A number of factors will influence this development. Travel and trade, microbiological resistance, human behavior, breakdown in health systems, increased pressure on the environment, social, political, and economic factors that cause the movement of people will also increase contact between people and microbes and environmental changes caused by human activity all will contribute to the spread of disease. The overuse of antibiotics and insecticides combined with inadequate or deteriorating public health infrastructures will hamper or delay responses to increasing disease threats. That is directly from the website of the World Health Organization. But when you come to these verses, particularly Luke 21 verse 11, Jesus was really prophesying pandemics at the end of the age. And of course, a pandemic is a disease, an outbreak that has the potential to affect world populations. I think today we really understand what Jesus was talking about. But Jesus prophesied there would be pestilences, outbreaks of old and new diseases, and it would be an indication that we are speeding toward the very conclusion of the age. Well, since you and I are living in the very last of the last days, God said, tag, you're it. He chose us to live in this age. And my friend, we can do it with victory. But it means we know, need to know what the Bible says about health and healing. The Bible is very, very clear. And it is our moment not to be afraid, but to arise with the word of God and the authority of Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on the sick and demonstrate the power of God. My friend, we are equipped for this age. And it's a good time for us to really understand the 91st Psalm. Listen to Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Verse three, surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse four, he will cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse five, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Verse six, nor for the pestilence. There you have it, sickness that stalketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Verse seven, a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Verse eight, only with your eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse nine, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, Thou shalt trample under feed. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. And verse 15, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. Verse 16, and with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Part of that salvation is healing and health. It belongs to us. And because we live at the very, very end of the age, when there's going to be mass, multiple pestilences, old diseases that have had new life breathed into them and newly emerging diseases, we need to hang on to the principles of God's word and abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Because when you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, none of these things will touch you. That's what the Bible says. And I believe the Bible. And God promises in Psalm 91, verse 16, with long life will he satisfy you and show you his salvation. That word salvation includes your health, your wholeness, your healing. All of that belongs to you because of the promise of God. But Jesus said, as we come to the very, very end of the age, we will see famines. This is a shortage of food, hunger worldwide also economic shortages, economic crisis, and economic shaking, and the emergence of pestilences and pandemics. But that's not all, because Jesus goes on to say in the very, very end of the age, there will be earthquakes, fearful signs, and signs from the heaven. What in the world is that? That's what we're going to find out in the next program. But I'm out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Sometimes Christian leaders can be sensationalistic about their beliefs in end-time events. But scaring people with Bible prophecy should not be the goal. God, in His great love, has chosen to inform us explicitly about the last days so that we can be prepared. In this 10-part series, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, Rick Renner teaches logically and reasonably about the signs we'll see just before Jesus comes. Jesus' words in Matthew 24 are both revealing and alarming. But nothing in the Bible was written to scare us. It was written to prepare us. God is faithful to inform us about what we need to know to live in this last season of this age. This series will answer the questions. Where are we in time? What signs will we see to let us know we're coming to the end of the age? What is the ultimate sign that Jesus is about to come again? This eye-opening 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. In addition, right now you can order the companion books, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes for just $15 and Last Day's Survival Guide for only $25. There is so much information in the New Testament about end time events that we cannot claim ignorance on this subject. And the scriptures tell us how to live victoriously through this end time season. Don't miss this special offer, the series, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes and the companion books, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, and Last Day's Survival Guide. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, and right behind me through this wonderful park is one of our Moscow Good News Church satellite churches. You know, everyone needs a good church they can call their spiritual home. As a ministry, we're believing for revival of the Bible in people's lives, and to have a church you can call your home is so very important. For decades, we have been working in the countries of the former Soviet Union. 
and we have started churches in Riga, the capital of Latvia. Moscow, the capital of Russia. And Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Every city where we have opened a church has brought its own similar and unique challenges. But the goal has always been the same, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have also started an online church that is touching people in countries we have never been to and people we could never reach. People all over the world need the gospel and we are so glad that our online church is an answer for them. After we dedicated the Moscow Good News Church building, we started taking churches to other regions of Moscow and now we're opening satellite churches all over this wonderful city. Moscow is huge and we need to take the gospel to as many people as possible in our wonderful city. One way to do this is by opening satellite churches so the people all over Moscow have a good spiritual home. If you're one of our partners, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Spreading the gospel is so important. People need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ just like you did one day. If you're not one of our partners, I want to invite you to become one. Would you please consider supporting us financially so we can continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the globe. It is so important. Please call or go online to renter.org to give through your generous financial support we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives around the world. This program today has just flown by and we're barely getting started. When we come back, we're going to continue in Matthew chapter 24. But I want to remind you that when you become a partner with our ministry, we'll immediately send you a couple books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. And I want to also remind you that today we're offering you my brand new series, called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Jesus is coming, and my friend, He is coming very soon. And there will be signs that will verify that we're at the very end of the age just before He comes. We need to know the signs that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 24, and it comes with a marvelous study guide. We're also offering you my book by the same name, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Please order yours today. Just go online or give us a call right now and we're also offering you my big book called Last Day's Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. My friend, this is a book you need. God wants to tell you how to survive and thrive in this age we're living in. And my friends, we're surrounded by a lot of bizarre events. We need to know how to survive and thrive in any season and that's why I wrote this book for you. So order yours today. Just go online or give us a call. And remember that if you need prayer, we're here. We want to hear from you. Give us a ring. Send us an email. The moment we hear from you, we're going to begin to pray. And by the way, if you have a need for healing in your body, I speak healing to you in the name of Jesus. God promises that with long life will he satisfy you and show you his salvation. Take it. That salvation includes healing for your body and your mind and your emotions. And I speak it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, this has been so good today. I'll see you in the next program. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.